Now, back to the fabricated Trinity verses, Matthew 28, verse 19. Uh, we left off last episode that Matthew 28, verse 19 is not part of the text. And some of you might ask, how do we know it is not part of the text? Now, in this episode, you'll find many references, arguments, and commentaries who have raised questions as to the genuineness of Matthew 28 verse 19, concluding that Matthew 28 verse 19 is unbiblical. I hope you get a notebook to write these things down uh, for future references, but I will still also include these documents at the comments section. I believe I have a total of 13 references and some uh, Bible uh, versions commentaries on this verse, Matthew 28, 19. We'll start with number one, which is my favorite, Eusebius. Eusebius, who lived between 260 and 339 uh, Common Era. For those who are not familiar with Eusebius, he was a Roman Christian historian and is regarded as a well-learned Christian scholar. He became the bishop of Caesarea in 314 Common Era and is known as the father of church history. Although he wrote prolifically, his most celebrated work in his uh, ecclesiastical history, a history of the church from the apostolic period until his own time. Today, it is still the principal work on the history of the church at, at that time. Now, Eusebius quotes many verses in his writings. And Matthew happens, uh, 28, Matthew 28, 19, uh, happens to be one of them, and he quoted it 17 times in his works. And this is prior to Nicaea, by the way. This is prior to Nicaea, which is significant. He never quotes it as it appears today in modern Bibles, but always finishes the verse with the words, in my name, like we mentioned in the uh, first episode of um, this series. So, for example, in book three of his history, chapter five, section two, which is about the Jewish persecution of early Christians. We read, and I quote, but the rest of the apostles who had been incessantly plotted against with a view to their destruction and had been driven out of the land of Judea, went unto all the nations to preach the gospel, relying upon the power of Christ, who had said to them, go ye and make disciples of all nations in my name." End of quote. Now, Eusebius quotes Matthew 28 verse 19 as, Go and make disciples of all nations in my name without mentioning the Trinity baptism uh, formula. Furthermore, Eusebius was present at the Council of Nicaea and was involved, by the way, he was involved in the debates about Arian teaching and whether Christ was God or creation of God. I feel confident that if the manuscripts he had in front of him, like read in the name of the Father and of the, the Son and of the Holy Spirit, he would never have coded it as in my name. Thus, I believe that the earliest manuscripts read in my name and that the phrase was enlarged to refract, reflect the orthodox position as Trinitarian influence spread. 